All right, today's lesson is over the three types of matter. We're going to talk about elements, compounds, and mixtures. And just think about all the different kinds of substances in the world. There are millions of different kinds of substances, and out of all of those substances, they're going to fall into one of those three groups. So what are those substances made up of? Well, all three of them are going to be made up of atoms, which are tiny particles of matter. And there are some substances that are made of different kinds of atoms. So water, for example, is made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Um, carbon and hydrogen atoms are in CO2. Um, the car contains iron, aluminum, silicon, oxygen, boron atoms. And you can see the flowers there contain carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. But there are some substances that only contain one kind of atom. And those types of substances are an element. So we've already talked about the periodic table of elements. And everything on the periodic table is a substance that contains only one type of atom. So copper here is only made up of copper atoms. They're all the same. Carbon is another element. It has only carbon atoms. And helium is an element because it's only made up of helium atoms. So because it's only made up of one kind of atom, an element cannot be broken down into anything else. You can't separate out um, an element into two things because it's all one type of atom. So here's just a drawing to represent an element. This element has one type of atom. This element is made up of all of a different type of atom. Now, um, an element has one atom, and if there are two atoms joined together, then we have what's called a molecule. So some elements, like oxygen, actually come in pairs. They come in molecules. The atoms aren't single by themselves. And if there's more than one atom hooked together, that's called a molecule. So here you can see there are two atoms in a molecule of oxygen. They're both the same, so it's still an element. Oxygen is still an element. It just happens to be in a molecule. Um, here are some other elements that also join into molecules. They're not single atoms, like the one, for example, that we saw in helium. Now, you can also get lots of different kinds of materials by combining the elements. So the way that we have millions of different elements, or excuse me, millions of different substances from just about 100 naturally occurring elements is because they combine in almost limitless different ways. And when they combine, just like combining cheeses, and you get all these different kinds of cheeses, is because they have a small number of ingredients, and the milk are combined under different conditions to make all this variety of cheese. Well, the same thing happens with elements. You have those hundred or so elements that combine in a various ways, various conditions, to make all of these different compounds. And a compound is a substance that is made when you have two or more elements that are going to combine in a chemical reaction. So they're taking those two or more elements and they chemically react. When they chemically react, they're going to make a completely new substance. So for example, hydrogen and oxygen can chemically bond together and you end up with a compound, which is water. Carbon dioxide contains carbon and oxygen chemically bonded in this ratio, one carbon atom to two oxygen atoms, and you end up with carbon dioxide. And a, a compound, remember, always has at least two different elements. So there's two different atoms here, two different types of atoms. Here in water, there's two different types of atoms. Now some compounds might have five elements, different kinds of atoms. Some might have 15. It just depends on that particular compound. We'll usually look at pretty simple compounds in this class. All right. The other idea to make sure you understand about a compound is that it can be completely different than the elements that make it up. So it can have completely different properties. Carbon dioxide, for example, contains carbon, which is a black solid. It can be used as fuel. With oxygen, which is a colorless gas essential for life, and you end up with carbon dioxide. That is a compound, a colorless gas that's used to put out fires. The properties of the carbon and the oxygen are very different than the compound that you get when you combine them. And remember, you're combining these in a one to two ratio, one atom of carbon to two atoms of oxygen. 
If you combine, let's say, one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen, you get carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a completely different substance. It is a colorless, odorless and um, gas that if you breathe it, it takes up space on your blood, red blood cells and they don't have room for oxygen and you basically suffocate because you, your cells can't get enough oxygen. Um, let's look at water for an, exa an example. Water is very different from the elements that make it up. So hydrogen is a colorless gas that combines with oxygen, a colorless gas, and you end up with liquid water that is essential to our lives. So the elements that go into a compound, once they hook together in that specific ratio, make a completely new substance that has its own specific properties. Now also, since an, a, a compound has more than one kind of atom, it can be separated. Here's an, a compound that has more than one kind of atom. It has two different elements, the purple represented by the purple and the blue. This one has seven different elements. So it, the number doesn't necessarily matter. It's that there's more than one. And since there's more than one, it can then be separated into the different elements that make it up. So you can chemically break it down. It's not easy to separate a compound, but you can chemically separate it into the elements that went into the compound. So here's kind of a summary of compounds for what you need to remember. First of all, they're made of elements in a specific ratio that's always the same. So in order to have water, you're going to have two atoms of hydrogen connected to one atom of oxygen. In order to have carbon dioxide, one atom of carbon connected to two atoms of oxygen. So they have to be in that ratio. If they're in a different ratio, you're going to end up with a different substance. They have a chemical formula, and so that's the H2O or the NaCl. We're going to talk about that later, about how to write the chemical formulas. They can only be separated chemically, not physically. Remember, they're chemically hooked together, so they're going to be hard to separate. And the properties can be very different from the elements that are in the compound. All right, next is mixtures. And mixtures are when you're just mixing things together. You're physically combining them, but they are not chemically bonding together. So they're going to be a lot easier to separate because it's just physical forces that have combined them, not chemical forces. There's no chemical reaction that takes place when you put the um, substances together. And each item is going to retain its properties. Now, it might look a little different. It might be in a different form. It might go from a solid to a liquid. Um, but it's not going to actually lose its properties and completely change its properties like happens when a compound forms. So you can take a block, you can crush it into dust, melt it, separate it back out. All right, we're going to practice identifying some. So on your notes page, up until this point, you've been putting in your notes for each of those different terms. Skip down to the bottom. There's a chart at the bottom where you're going to determine and put whether you think something is an element, one type of atom, a compound, more than one type, chemically bonded together, or a mixture where it's things that have just physically been combined. All right, compound, element, element compound, or mixture. Okay, what do you think about for rocks? Okay, rocks are a mixture. Okay, they're a mixture of different minerals. How about copper? Okay, copper is an element. You're going to find copper on the periodic table, so if you find something on the periodic table, it's going to be an element, only one type of atom. Jelly beans, yum. Jelly beans, you should have put a mixture. Table sugar, hmm, that's kind of a tricky one. Table sugar is a compound. Here's the chemical formula. It is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen chemically bonded together in a 12, 22, 11 ratio. A diamond, pretty. A diamond is an element. It's made out of carbon, and carbon is on the periodic table. So that one's a little tricky. You're like, well, diamond's not on the periodic table, but it is still pure carbon, only carbon atoms, so it's an element. Tea. I could use some tea today with my cold. <clears throat> tea is a mixture. Water, the tea, flavoring, the sugar, 
all just physically mixed together. Salt. Salt is a compound. NaCl, sodium and chlorine, one atom of each bonded together. Neon gas. Neon gas is an element. It's on the periodic table. It's one of the noble gases. Salad. Salad is a mixture, just physically combining lettuce, dressing. Pure water is a compound, H2O. Aluminum. Aluminum is an element, AL. It's on the periodic table. Lemonade. Lemonade, lemonade, lemonade is a mixture. Silver is an element, AG. It's on the periodic table. Sand. It's kind of a tricky one, I think. Sand is a mixture. It's a mixture of a bunch of different grains of rocks. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go. We're not going to get into chemical formulas quite yet.